Well, praise the Lord. We just had a power outage, so who knows what may lurk next? The shadow knows. <laughs> As the old commercials went. Spiritual twins, holiness and happiness. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. 1 Peter 4.13 I want to bring you my postulate that most present-day Christians live sub-Christian lives. As a result, Christianity has been watered down until the solution is so weak that if it were poison, it would not hurt anyone, and if it were medicine, it would not cure anybody. Most Christians are not joyful persons because they are not holy persons. And they are not holy persons because they are not filled with the Holy Spirit. And they are not filled with the Holy Spirit because they are not separated persons. You know, I think about that in regards to holiness. And, you know, there's this whole movement, holiness movement to begin with, you know. Boy. But really what makes us holy isn't what's outside of us. What makes us holy is what's in us. If the Holy Spirit is in you, meaning that Jesus has come into your life, you've asked him, you abide with him, and he abides with you. He lives in you. He instructs you. You listen to him. You hear his voice, that the Holy Spirit causes you to remember those things, that you have been filled with God's Spirit, then you are holy. And that's what the tabernacle became. It was a tent, a mishkan, just a tent of meeting, a place to meet God with. And the outside of the tent was designed with dead badger skins because there was nothing peculiarly, particularly special about it. It was just a normal, everyday looking, like Bedouin tent. And the Bedouins, when they travel, you know, they have these outer surfaced tent material that the heat beats upon, you know, the outer weathering causes it to be a protective barrier for the inner things that are actually going on, which are the most important. And that's where the Bedouin live. They live inside. And sometimes they have tapestries inside that are beautiful and ornate, and they have television sets and everything else inside, but they live in a tent. But the outsides are kind of drab. They're kind of dead, you know, and the tabernacle was designed the same way when the children of Israel were wandering in the desert, is that it was designed to be protecting what was inside as opposed to what was looking like what it was on the outside, which was simply dead badger skins, dead animal skins, you know, those kind of things that you would say maybe even a teepee was made out of. That's the way it was. But what was holy about the tabernacle that made it special was what was inside that counted. And that's the same thing that's true when you really get into the scriptures and you understand them about what Jesus has done. It's not about a holiness movement. It's not about trying to fix your outer actions and make yourself into something holy and special because that doesn't work. In the holiness movement, you see that there are people that look holy, but really are holy on the inside. What makes anyone holy is the Holy Spirit. And only He can change the nature of a heart to make it from a heart of stone into a heart of flesh, to change it from a carnal heart to a spiritual heart, to change the person inside from a unholy, ungodly person to a holy, sanctified, set-apart, believer in Jesus. When I think about that, I just, I'm amazed, I'm awed. It just brings me real humble because it has nothing to do with me. Holiness doesn't have to do with my choices and my putting on a talis or wearing a talis katan or putting zitzis or, you know, on my, my clothes or putting fringe on my pants or any of those stupid things that, you know, traditions are good and maybe they at one time were important to kind of make us feel the right way we should feel when we enter into the presence of God. But when you have the Holy Spirit inside, when you really, really get down to it, when it's not about this 
power thing, the Holy Spirit, dunamis and exploding, but this sensitivity thing of the patience of God, the long suffering, the kindness, the gentleness, the meekness, the temperance, the love, the joy, the peace. Then you find that really holiness boils down to who he is and not what you are. Because there's no way that you are holy. Sorry. It doesn't work that way. But he is and he's in you. So he is holy and you become holy as you are partakers with him of his holiness. The spirit cannot fill whom he cannot separate. And whom he cannot fill, he cannot make holy. And whom he cannot make holy, he cannot make happy. My postulate further insists that the average modern Christian is not Christ-like. If anything, they're God-like, or they think they are. The proof of this is apparent in the disposition that we find among the children of God. They have moral weakness, moral weaknesses, and suffer frequent defeats. They have dulled understanding and often live far below the standard of the scriptures and thus outside the will of God. To be honest, let us admit that the application of the gospel is being pulled down to the standard of most carnal, of the most carnal, and the cheapest saintling hanging on by the teeth anywhere in the kingdom of God. In other words, he's saying that what we've done and what we're doing and what he saw being done in the 20th century, modern days, this is Tozer, that people were so making it, God's got a wonderful plan for your life that God became cheap. Grace became cheaper still. And it became so simple to say you're a Christian and not know Jesus. Because if you know Jesus, you know that God is bringing you to a place of really knowing that in you, you know, you're no, nobody special. You know, you know you're a sinner. And you're working on not being so much like who you are, but being more like he is, so that you would become less a sinner and more a saint, and more like Jesus as opposed to like the world. And I think that that's what Tozer's trying to say, that if you don't separate yourself from the world, like your political affiliations, like your quote-unquote football games and all these other things that you spend so much time on, maybe even World of Warcraft, maybe even the internet, who knows? But those things that seem to distract you away from God, that if you don't spend time with God, then how could God ever make you holy? How could he fill you completely? How could he put his spirit in you holy so that you would be holy spirit filled and become holy unto him? If we don't, deny ourselves, if we don't take up our cross and follow him, if we don't hear God's voice, if we don't walk with him, if we don't talk with him, if we don't have a personal relationship with him, but we have an idea that we think we're Christian, I think we're going to find out we weren't a Christian after all. We were religious, but did we know Jesus? The only answer you can have is, do you know Jesus? And you know if you know. If you're still learning about it, then maybe you're just a, a follower and you're just starting to follow Jesus' teachings. Maybe you're just starting to walk with him a little bit. You don't really know him that well. But you're walking with him. Let me encourage you to keep going because a lot of people I fear and I'm worried that you know they might have stopped along the way and they really haven't gone all the way to know him as he requires us to know him he said he wouldn't cast anybody out but he said my yoke is easy my burden is light come unto me all you that are heavy laden and i will give you rest and i will what read all of the sermon on the mount he wants us to move onward with him helping us to do those things that he told us to do because if we don't do them he said, if you don't do these sayings of mine, I never knew you. Holiness is not a holiness movement. It's not about the gifts of the Spirit. It's not about the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. 
Holiness is about the filling of God. Of God himself filling himself in you and filling you up with his purposes and plans that he wants to do in the world with you involved. That is true holiness. That is what God wants for your life.